welcome to Transform Your World. I'm Pastor Dennis, and it's a pleasure for you to join us today. In fact, I'm privileged for us to be able to come to your homes today. And with me is a wonderful friend of mine, Pastor Dennis Hall. He's a pastor of Briar Creek Church. Pastor, you're welcome. Oh, thank you so much. It's so wonderful to be here. As you know, the title of our show is Transform Your World. Yes, sir. And we believe that God has given us a mission to equip our viewers with God's Word and His presence so that they can change their world. When we talk about your world, it may be your, your sphere of influence. It may be your job. It may be the intellectual world. It may be the business world. Wherever you find yourself, that is your world. And we believe God wants you, you, to, you to make a difference wherever you find yourself. Amen. But Pastor, there's a question. How can we transform our world when our lives are not transformed? Well, the only way that you can transform your sphere of influence is that you yourself have to be transformed. Yeah. And the only way that you can be transformed is to allow the Spirit of God to transform you from the inside out. Yeah. Too often we try to transform our spheres of influence and we try to transform ourselves from the outside in, mm -hmm. but it, it, it only lasts for a season. Yeah. But if you want continual change and you want lasting change, mm -hmm. allow the Lord to transform you from the inside. To you the know, uh, many have been said about change. Some people use it as a campaign slogan, change, change our world, change our nation transformation. But like you said, if our lives are not transformed, then when the rubber meets the road, we realize that we're just on sinking sand and everything's going to collapse. Yes. Like it is said, the reason, the reason why our culture is not that effective or our nation is not that effective because our values are not effective. Exactly. Our values are corrupted. But I'm happy what you said, that to have a transformed, li um, a, a transformed life, you have a relationship with the Lord. Yes. So tell us more about that. Well, you know, Everything with the Lord has to be from his initiative. Okay. See, we often think that we're the ones that choose God. Yeah. But, you know, Jesus said to his disciples, you didn't choose me, mm -hmm. but I chose you. Yeah. And even when Nicodemus came to Jesus, you know, he was hiding and he came in secret. Yeah. And Jesus said, you must be born again. Yeah. But Jesus said something very peculiar. He said, you know, the spirit goes where the spirit goes. And, and, and Jesus was saying that it's the spirit that initiates yes. this whole relationship, this whole born again with God. Mm -hmm. And so God himself is calling people. God has sent out his spirit into people's hearts. Mm -hmm. And he's knocking on the doors of their hearts and he's saying, I want to come in and dine with you. Amen. And so God's just waiting for people to, to, to release themselves and submit themselves to the call that he's already placed in their hearts. I love what you said. God is waiting on people to submit himself to him. The truth is that when we go out there, there are many people who always say they have a relationship with God. When I go on the street, I say, hey, do you know God? Yes, I know God. So I know there are different kinds of relationships. So we talk about having a relationship with God. What do you mean? You have to go to church, baptism, you know, or what do you mean by having a relationship with God? Well, you know, I, I, I compare my relationship with God mm -hmm. with my marriage. Okay. I, I believe that's one of the best illustrations. A marriage is all about covenant. Yeah. It's all about intimacy. Mm -hmm. It's all about communication. Yeah. You know, in a marriage, you don't give 50%. In a marriage, you give 100%. Yeah. And so in the same way with our relationship with God, mm -hmm. this is all about a covenant. Yeah. It's about a holy God mm -hmm. who saw fit to send his only son yes. to die for our sins mm -hmm. that he might come and dwell within us. Oh, wonderful. And that brings this amazing, amazing relationship that creation gets to have with God. Yeah, and what, what Pastor just said is that um, how, um, the relationship with God is an intimate relationship. Yes. Because God is looking for men and women who have submitted themselves before the cross. Yes. So that he can indwell in them. Yes. Very important that relationship with God has to be very intimate and connected. The truth is that um, places don't make people. People make places. Yes. And it's dependent upon the values of the people. If your values are corrupt, everywhere around you is going to be corrupt. So it is very important that we focus more on our lives. Yes, How absolutely. can we transform our life? How can we become renewed before we can even focus on our nation and on society? What do you think about that, Pastor? Oh, um, you, you've raised some very important points. Mm -hmm. one, one of the things I think is people try to change our society through politics. Mm -hmm. You know, people try to change the moral fabric, mm -hmm. you know, by, by changing behavior. Yeah. And, uh, and as I said before, that will only last for a season and also will disappoint. Yeah. And, and we also got to be careful because the Bible says that the heart mm. is, is very deceptive, mm. you know, and, and, and we, we think we believe one way or we act one way, but the, but the heart will trick us. Yeah. And so that's why we really need the power of God to yes. indwell within us. Mm. We need someone 
greater than ourselves mm -hmm. in order to really have the power That's to good. transform our spheres of influence. Yeah, I believe we can only change the world because God lives in us. Yes. And He is doing His works through us. Yes. You know, but many people are confused with this idea. For example, about 90% of Americans claim to be Christian. You know, because they go to church, because they say the Lord's Prayer, because they've been baptized, or because their grandmother was in that church. Yes. So they automatically say, you know what, I'm a Christian. But according to the uh, North Carolina Baptist Mission Board, they say that almost 75% of Americans are lost. They don't have a relationship with God. What do you think about that? Well, I, I think so many people are Christians because that's the American cultural norm. Mm. You know, people call themselves Christians because they're not Jewish mm -hmm. or they're not Muslim or they're not Buddhist. Mm -hmm. and, and so there's a big misconception that, that Christianity is just about going to church. Mm. It's about paying your tithe. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about doing good things. Yeah. But, but that really is not biblical Christianity. Yes. Biblical Christianity is really about receiving the atonement mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. Yes. That he died and came and, and suffered and mm -hmm. died on the cross for our sins and he rose on the third day. And when he did that, he allowed his presence, his, his essence by the Holy Spirit to come and dwell within us. Oh, yeah. And I'd like to tell our viewers that I remember it was about probably like 10 or 11 years or 12 years ago when I opened my heart to the Lord Jesus, you know, to be my Lord and Savior. At first, I was a very young man that was full of himself. You know, I knew I was intelligent. I was, you know, my, my, my mom took care of me. Everything was going well, but deep inside, I was empty. Yes. I was looking for purpose. Yes. I was looking for something that I could live for. And many people are looking into their career. That's why they work so hard. And they're going to put down their friends because they want to climb up the corporate ladder. Many people will do something because they're trying to get an empowerment from the world, from the society. Yes. But yet there's some emptiness within you. Because when you get rich, what else? Get more rich, what else? Exactly. exactly. So when Christ came to my life, that was it. I had purpose, Pastor. Amen. I had a reason for living. I was ready to even die. I'm like, God, you know what? If I die now, I know where I'm going. Amen. You know, because I have purpose. And I want to say this to our viewer. You may be out there and you're looking for purpose. Purpose. And, 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 and fulfillment is not in women, it's not in drugs, it's not in money, it's in the Lord Jesus. And that's something that we have to understand. It's more than going to church. It's more than paying your tithe. It is your ability for you to open your heart and receive his love. Yes, yes. And believe on the work that Christ did on the cross by dying for your sins. So right now, Pastor, what can you say to somebody who is out there, who is struggling in his relationship with God? Who is just going through the motion and going through the addiction and, and many things that happen around their lives. And the one who really know God, what do you say to them? Well, first of all, I would like to share with them, you are not alone. Mm. So often people feel that they are the only ones that is going through this particular struggle. Yeah. But I, I just want to assure you that there, there are so many others that have already gone that same path that you are, that you are currently going through. Mm. Next, I want to let you know that God loves you. Yeah. It says in the Bible that he loved you before you were even formed in your mother's womb. He wow. knew you. Wow. And so God has a supernatural love for you. Mm. And, and in that love, it says that he predestined Jesus oh, Christ yes. for you. Mm -hmm. And so God knew even before you were born, even before the foundation of the world, that you were going to be addicted. Yeah. He knew that you were going to try to fill that, that longing in your heart with, with promiscuity, with with money, and, and, and God also knew those things would never satisfy. So God had already set in place his son because only Jesus can fill the void in your life. Mm -hmm. So if, 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 if you don't know what to do next, I always tell people, cry out. Mm. Just cry out. You don't need a fancy prayer. Okay. You, know, you, you don't need to have all the, the King James Version type <laughs> of language. All you have to do is say, Jesus, if you're real, help me. Mm. Help me. Mm. And sometimes all you can just say is Jesus. Amen. And the Bible says that Jesus will hear your cry. Yes. And he will answer your cry. Amen. So just cry out to him. I believe that that's the a, that's a beginning of real transformation. That is the beginning of real transformation. You know, by crying out to God and letting him come into your heart and giving you purpose and fulfilling your life. And then from there you're able to change your world. Yes. Because you cannot give what you don't have. You can only give what you have. Amen. And if the Christ in you is not solid, if the Christ in you is not real, That's right. you can't give it out to people. And so we'll try to do what you said, use politics, yes. use business, use every kind of maneuver to bring change in our environment. But I want us to go back. 
on, on what it really means to have an intimate relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, about according to Josh Banner, about 65% of Americans who are Christians are what you call casual Christians. In other words, they go to church, they love the Lord, but their faith has no big impact on their daily lives. Yes. As a matter of fact, nine, almost 90% of Christians pray at least once, one time a week. They don't do it on a daily basis. But yet, they claim that you know, they know God. But I want you to, to come to this point of that there are two things. There's what you call an intimate relationship with yes. God. And let's build on that now. Yes. I, again, I want to go back to that whole marriage picture. Okay. What would it look like? I have a wonderful wife. Her name is Sharon. Oh. And what would it look like if I caught myself being married to Sharon, mm -hmm. yet we never talk? Mm. If, if we just lived in separate rooms, yeah. if, if, if we never had any kind of embrace, if mm. we never had any type of conversation, yes. would you really call that a fulfilled marriage? No, no. And s likewise, so many people say that they know God and that God knows them, mm -hmm. but there is no intimacy, there, there's oh, no yeah. conversation, there's no embrace, mm. there's no feeling of that, that God is with them. Oh. And, and, and so th I, I believe it's, it's a major deception mm -hmm. That, that, that people are in and that they believe that they're Christians, but, but there's no intimacy, that there's, there's, there's no indwelling oh, of yes. God himself mm -hmm. within his people. Yeah. You know, the Bible says that um, those that seek me shall find me. Yes. It's a draw unto me and I will draw near unto you. In yes. other words, if you don't draw near to God, he won't draw near to you. That is I believe that you know, when we're sinners, you know, God came and sought us. He sent his son, he was searching for us. And he saved us. Yes. Now that we are saved, we ought to be seeking God. Yes, yes. He's looking for a reverse relationship, a reciprocal of what he has done for us. Now you're safe. Come on, you got to seek me. You got to come to me. So there's a, there's a notion that, oh, you know what? God knows us, everything we need. You don't need to cry to God. You don't need to pray to God. You don't need to seek God. You know, all is well. No. God is looking. The Bible says that should come boldly to the throne of grace. Yes. You yes. got to come. If yes. you do not come, you won't find me. Yes. You won't find him. And first, people need to recognize that we really have a need for God. Yeah. I believe there's something in us that we kind of think we, we can do it on our own. Mm. You know, I, I, I can pull myself up by my own bootstraps. Oh. And so I believe the first recognition in terms of seeking after God is to recognize I need God. Oh. And so when you recognize that you need God, you will seek after him. And when God fills you with his spirit, the spirit of the living God will even call unto God. Oh. I know it sounds kind of confusing that, that God himself pours his presence mm -hmm. in us, mm -hmm. but that very presence that God pours in us causes us mm. to seek after Jesus. Oh, yes. So the Holy Spirit's job is to, to create that intimacy mm. and also to create that desire oh, yes. to go after Jesus. You know, that's what the prophet Isaiah says, that no one can come to him unless he calls him. Yes, yes. And, you know, and this is very, very important. You may be out there and even being a Christian, and, and you don't have a living relationship with God, and you don't know all about seeking God, or you are fearful, or you are afraid. You don't know what the world holds. Listen to me, my friend. God is waiting for you. He wants to come into your life and make a complete change, a complete difference. But the question is, are you ready to seek him? Are you ready to find a place, a solace place, and come to his throne each day? You know, Pastor, something's very important right here. And this is what I see, is that when God saved the throne of Israel from, um, from, from, from Egypt and took them by the Red Sea, he took them into the, into the wilderness to reveal himself to them, yes. to show that he is a good God. Yes. To show them his love and his glory. Yes, yes. And I believe that when we become a Christian, God is so eager to reveal himself to us. Yes. But the question is, we have to seek him. We have to seek him. And do you know, and I, and I, and I want everyone to know that we were created to give God glory. Mm -hmm. We were created to be in that intimacy with him. We mm -hmm. were created mm. to be in that relationship with him. Yeah. And, and, and so God does want to reveal himself to Amen. us Amen. because God wants to embrace us. He, yes. he, he wants us to worship him. He wants us to, to be in that loving relationship. You know, we, we, we call God our father. Yes. And, and, and so just like I as an earthly father, I have four children. Just like I want to have intimacy with my kids. Yes. I want to hug them. I want to protect them. Mm. I want them to feel secure. Mm. If I want that for my children, how much more does our Heavenly Father mm. want that for us? You know, I, I know we live in a very busy world. You know, we've got a job to do. 
you know, we've got families, and sometimes the schedules are so crazy. And we just want to make it, you know, we don't want to pay that bill on time, send that check in the mail on time. And sometimes it distracts us from seeking God. Yes. You know, and there's this blockade in front of us that we cannot actually settle down and say, God, I just want to wait on you. I just want to see who you are. I just want to have time with you. And so there are many people, even though they are Christians, but yet they don't have time, you know, to seek God. And they always say they are busy. And the only time they seek God is when they come to church on Sunday morning. I know. So, Pastor, you're a pastor. <laughs> what do you say to such Christians? I, I um, was at a conference with Henry Blackaby. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that he said that really even convicted me as a pastor, mm. he said the level of our prayer life mm. is the level of our love life. Mm. And he said that the, the depth of our love for God will determine how much we seek after God. Mm. The level of, of, of the knowledge of how God has forgiven us mm. and how we have been rebellious to him and yet he's embraced us with his grace and his forgiveness. Mm -hmm. The level that we recognize that mm -hmm. is the depth and the level that we will love him yeah. and the depth and the level that we will seek after him. Amen. So I would, I, would, I would ask our viewers, mm -hmm. if, if God has rescued you or you need rescuing, acknowledge that and then in that, find the priority mm -hmm. to seek after him. Because yes. the things that we love, we will go after. A drug addict will go after the drugs. That's good right of us. And so the drug addict will find the priority because there's, mm. there's, a, there's a desire there's a de for that. I was going to come right there. That the, the basis for intimacy with God, number one, is to have a desire. Yes. Psalm 42 verse 1, as a deer tests after the water. Yes. So long my soul yes. after thee. Yes. You know, the deer sometimes is so thirsty for water from running throughout the desert, yes. throughout the mountains, because sometimes he's been pursued by other animals. And so he becomes so thirsty. And water is like a rescue to the deer. Without water, he's going to die. So as he tests after water, David said, Lord, so my soul yes, goes yes. after you. Yes. So Pastor said it right. The number one priority is to desire God. Yes. Do you desire him above all other things? Yes. As a crack addict desires his, his, his drugs, do you desire God above every other thing? I believe it starts there with a deep desire for God. Pastor. It really does, Pastor Dennis. And, and what has to happen, you really have to get sick and tired. Mm. When you get sick and tired of your current situation, oh, hallelujah. When, 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 when you get tired of being tired, mm. and, 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 and you've, you've tried everything, you've, yeah. you've tried the patch, you've, mm. you've, you've, you've tried all kinds of, you've tried it all. And when you finally get tired yes. and you throw up your arms and you just say, I can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's when that desire will well up, it, oh. well up in you mm -hmm. to seek after God. Yes. I used to be a lifeguard, believe it or not, mm -hmm. when I was younger. <laughs> and one of the things they teach you as a lifeguard, that when someone is drowning, you do not jump in the water. Yeah. You wait okay. till that person gets tired. Yes. You wait till that person, their struggle, that they get practically limp and to the point where they actually start to sink mm -hmm. is at that point is when you jump into the water to save them mm. because if you jump in prior to that that person can bring you down as that's well. true that's true and I believe that's where the desire comes when yes. when we're tired of fighting we're tired of struggling mm. and we're about to sink to the bottom that's when you'll find that priority to seek after oh, God yes. and when and the Lord says in Jeremiah 29 that when you seek me mm. you, will you will find, find me. me when you seek me with, with all, all your, your heart. heart the Bible said that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him yes it starts with a desire you know do you desire God above every other thing in your life the Bible said in the book of Psalms David he said he said Lord I'd rather be a doorkeeper at your house than to dwell in the tent of the wicked. Yes. Because a day in your court is better than a thousand days elsewhere. Yes. So you see the desire that David have. That Lord, that is my motion. That's my picture. Picture in my mind that I'd rather be a doorkeeper at your house. Yes. yes. Than to dwell probably in the White House. Or Come on, that's <laughs> right. That's right. I'd rather be a doorkeeper at your house than to dwell with unrighteousness. Father, that's a desire. Yes. And we need to come to that point. And only God mm. can satisfy. Yes. You know, there's, there's been times when I've been so thirsty. Mm. And this is the truth. Yeah. Coca-Cola can't quench it. Mm. 
Kool-Aid can't quench it. Yes. Only the pure water can quench oh, it. Oh, hallelujah. And so when people come to that thirst, mm. that's out of the thirst the desire comes. Amen. And nothing else will satisfy mm. Mm. because Jesus himself is the only one Amen. that can fulfill the desires and satisfy the oh, quench yes. of our thirst. You know, Jesus spoke to the woman at the wall, in yes. Samar the Samaritan woman. And he said, you know what? The water I give you, yes. you, know, you, sh you shall test no more. And this woman has been looking for so many things in her life. She had five husbands. She's been jumping from one guy to the other. She, she's been desperate. There was a need in her heart. Yes. There was a deep desire, a longing for something more. Amen. And then she came face to face with her destiny. Jesus right there. And said, you know what, man? There's something I'm going to give you. And you will test no more. Amen. You will test no more. Amen. Come on, Pastor. And he satisfies. He satisfies. He satisfies. And, and, and. And, and not only does he satisfy, but the Lord says that I will give you waters overflowing. That's good. And so no, not only does the Lord fulfill your desire, but he fills you so much that you're overflowing and that others will be able to drink of the water. Amen. But it's been based on your desire to seek on after God. Desire. You know, there's some few steps that you could do to, um, um, to seek God. You know, like I said, the first thing is to have the desire that you want to really see God move in your life. You want to really have an re intimate relationship with God. And then you've got to find time to pray. Yes. You've got to find time just to wait on God. Very important, Pastor. Yes. To pray and to wait on Him and allow God to reveal Himself to you. Yes. I, I would challenge our, our, our viewers with the same challenge that was given to me by Blackity. Mm. If you say you love God, mm -hmm. then you will take time yes. to spend with God. Oh, yes. I cannot say that I love my wife, mm. yet never talk to my wife. Mm, mm, mm. And so the challenge is we will find the time. We find the time to do whatever else we need to do. Mm -hmm. But God is beckoning us and he's calling us because he wants to spend time with us. Yes. And he wants us to hear his voice. Isn't it amazing? That God who knows the past, present, and future, yes. he is wanting to share mm. his life and his heart with us. Yes. And all he asks is that we come and listen and sit with him and receive of him. Amen. You know, I want to really say that um, right now that God is doing something on the earth. I believe God wants to move yes, in this nation of America. And I believe yes, God wants to start by moving in your heart. Yes, God wants to visit you wherever you are. You may be on your couch. You may be in bed. God want to visit you wherever you are. He want to pour His Spirit in abundance in your life. Yes. So I ask you this question again. Do you desire God to move in your heart? Yes. If you desire Him, I'm sure you can go on your knees right now and just cry and say, God, here am I. Feel me. Here am I. Touch me. Here am I. Transform me. Here am I, Lord. I want to see a new dimension of your power, a new dimension of your grace. And so, Pastor, right now, what advice can you give to, to our viewers out there that want to take this step in coming to a, a living and intimate relationship with God? Amen. Well, I just want to encourage you. Firstly, I, I would just like to say that God is so real. Amen. He is not a figment of our imagination. He's mm -hmm. not a fairy tale, but God is real. And he promises if we cry out to him that he will answer our cry. And also, I just want to encourage you just to be real with God. Yeah. You know, he knows oh, yeah. everything about us. He knows the depths of our hearts. You know what? God knows us better than we know ourselves. Oh, yes. And so just be real with God. Tell God, you know, God, I don't even like you right now. God, I'm angry with you. Be mm. honest with God because he already knows our heart. God is looking for an authentic people. God wants to work in the, in the pain and, and the Amen. hurts of our Amen. hearts. So, so as, as you're honest with God, just cry out to God. Amen. Cry out to him, and he understands, and he wants to comfort you and bring the balm mm. to heal you. Mm. And he will do it. He yeah. will do it. I, you know, I really believe that at this moment in time, wherever you find yourself, that God want to do something supernatural in your life. And I want to encourage you and give you some few steps. You may start by getting up early, like you, like, like you usually do. Mm. Maybe the first five minutes of your, of your time, give it to God and say, God, I want to see you. I mean, look for a little place that's quiet and just sit down and just be quiet in God's presence and give him the first five minutes of your day and say, God, here am I. Fill me with your spirit. Here am I, Lord. I want to know you. I want to worship you. 
And I want you to come up from that mentality of just always going to God because you need things, or you know, of always asking God, I need this, I need this, I need this. And I want you to go to God just because you love him and you want to see him move in your life. So the first thing is that get up early. And the first five minutes of your day, give it to him. The second thing is that spend time praying and reading the word of God. When you pray, you get to know more about God. When you pray, you go to talk to God. And the biggest thing in prayer is that God will respond to your prayer yes. with his voice. The third thing I want to tell you is that if you can, if you can, you know, pray for others. Don't just pray for yourself. Pray for others. Pray for your family. Pray for your friends. Allow God to begin to share his love in your heart by praying for others. And the final thing I want you to do is that I want you right now, wherever you are, to open your Bible and read the book of John, chapter 4, the encounter of Jesus mm. with the woman at, at, at the wall in Samaria. And see how God revealed himself to this woman and say, you know what? I am the water. And the water I give you shall test no more. Because I'm looking for people who worship me in spirit and in truth. So before we round up our program tonight, I'm going to go back to our pastor. I'm going to ask him to pray for us. That God will reveal himself to us in a mighty way. Pastor, can you pray for us? Before I pray, I would just like to share quickly that no matter where you are in your spiritual journey, you, you may not even know God or you may be a seasoned Christian. But I believe Jesus is saying right now, he's saying, come to me, mm. all of you who are weak, mm. all of you who are broke, all of you who are downtrodden, all of you who have lost your hope, come to me and I will give you rest. Amen. Jesus wants to give you rest. That's that intimacy. He wants to dwell within you. Amen. So if you would just rest in him, if you come to him, he will give you the peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen. If you would, would you uh, just, you don't even have to bow your heads. Um, you know, that's, that's some type of tradition we do, but you can even have your eyes open because God hears. Amen. But if you, if, if you would just pray with me as, as, as we go to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your people that are divinely appointed to see this program. Lord, we pray, God, that you will meet their every need Amen. according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. Father, we pray that you would hear their cry. Amen. Father, from the depths of their souls, from the depths of their hearts, God, that they would cry out to you. Amen. And Lord, that they would know and realize that you are the only one that can satisfy Lord, like the woman at the well, God, that you want to give them waters, refreshing springs of life. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we receive the gift. We receive the wellspring of your life. And your children are set free to worship and to seek your face. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for watching our show today. You can go online at www.transformyourworld.tv. And we thank you so much for, for being part of this show. Have a blessing. Bye-bye.